What's going on guys? Today we're doing some testing on some dead batteries on this 2021 Jeep Wrangler JLU Eagle Diesel. So this is my parents' Jeep that we had at SEMA uh, two years actually in the air design booth. And it, they call it their Sunday vehicle because they only drive it to church. And so of course having it not being driven regularly, the battery kind of wears dead faster. So we're gonna do a couple little testing things. The first one is I want to test the battery state of health as well as the um, rate that it is charged at. Uh, so we're gonna try and do some battery testing with my Icon T10 scanner from Harbor Freight. That is my big scanner. So I'm gonna get this booted up and I'm gonna show y'all a walkthrough of how you can do battery testing with this scan tool. And then from there, I have a feeling that it's actually due to the slow draining of the auxiliary battery because that is a known issue with these Jeeps and also the gladiators of the auxiliary battery that is responsible for the start stop feature. Those will actually drain the main battery really fast. So between the cold, it not being driven a whole lot and the auxiliary battery draining from it too, I'm pretty sure this main battery has just been through a lot. So we're gonna do some testing here and see what we find. Okay, so I even tried putting a um, battery charger pack on it and it won't even read that. So I'm going to start by trying to bypass the auxiliary battery because I'm pretty sure that's actually what's limiting the actual battery to be able to function. So we're gonna begin by doing that. So the first things first, we're gonna go to our fuse panel. Now this Jeep has aftermarket lighting on it, which is why I've got my little extra panel right here that we use for mounting our control switches to. But um, our fuse panel is right here. You can also see that this Jeep has a lot of audio. So don't get me wrong, it does take quite a bit of battery power to power all the add-ons, but it should not be this crazy. Okay. So we are looking for fuse number 42 because that one goes to the PCR control feed. So the ESS, that is your automatic start and stop. So we're gonna find fuse 42 and pull that fuse out of the PDC. Fuse plier tool out. Okay, so fuse 42 is this 10 amp fuse right here. So we're gonna pull that out with our little fuse pliers, pull this one out, and then that way we can go ahead and disconnect the negative terminal that goes to the auxiliary battery from the negative terminal on the main battery. Okay, so there's gonna be two different negatives. We know that this one is an aftermarket one because of the type of loom that's on it. So this is the negative that's going to the sound system. We have these two negative cables right here. One that we're gonna follow back to go to the chassis or the frame, body, whatever you wanna call it for a ground. And then this one is actually pretty obvious considering the fact that it is plastered with this huge yellow tag talking about the auxiliary battery. So my assumption is going to be that this one is our negative one. So we're going to disconnect it from here and tape it up out of the way. Again, it's easier if I just bring all my own tools. So I always come prepared with all my little tools that are in my truck. So we're gonna just go ahead and remove this one with a 13. Take this one off, take this one off. That one off. All right, so I connected our battery pack, our charging pack back up right here. I could hear everything kind of click on. I'm gonna let that sit for a second and then I'm gonna see if we can get our cordless charger or our cordless, um, our wireless tester connecting thingies. Gosh, my brain is not breathing. So we'll see if we can get some love going on and then go from there yeah all right so we got a blue light that means it's communicating let's see if we have enough battery to get it to do what we need it to do 
Okay. No. AGM next. <sighs> I still have no idea. So we're going to go 750 because I honestly have no idea. I couldn't find it anywhere on the battery. So that's just so much fun. Okay. Battery state of health, 10%. Battery state of charge, zero. Yay. <clears throat> I would definitely say <laughs> we should replace this considering it says bad replace so unfortunately this main battery is long gone it's been through too much work to be able to revive it so at least then that way we're able to know that it's truly the battery but when i go ahead and replace this battery i'll show y'all where the auxiliary battery is as well so i know it's kind of jumping around a little bit but I hope this helps anybody, especially showing y'all how to use this is actually very helpful. We already had a uh, pretty good idea that that battery was far beyond uh, saving. It's okay, but just for the video's sake, it was easier to be able to showcase that. So now I'm going to jump over to their other Jeep, which is a 2000 uh, TJ, again Wrangler. Now that one does not have an auxiliary battery and I'm pretty sure that battery hasn't been replaced in probably close to like 20 years. So um, we're gonna go do that one on a check and I'll walk y'all through the steps with that one as well. Okay, so here is their other Jeep. Yes, they have two tie-dye Jeeps. So we're gonna go and do another test on this one. This one's a little bit easier to get to. Now, after I looked at this, these need to be cleaned because that is just absolutely disgusting. So there's no, there's obviously no rhyme or reason why those should be that dirty. So we're gonna clean those up. This one's a lot easier to see. Our cold cranking amps on this one is 550, which is actually pretty, pretty small. But considering that they only drive this vehicle in the summertime because they actually took the uh, top off, they just have it covered so that dust doesn't get underneath there. Um, anyways, so we're going to go ahead and connect our little connectors on this one and see if we can get a reading on this battery. All right, cool. So we have at least something going on here because we got the blue light already. So we're gonna retry. <clears throat> Connection succeeded. Um, I just do know because if you click on yes, it actually has some different steps with turning the headlights on and off. And truly, I just wanna know what is on this one. So we're gonna do cold cranking amps. And that one was 550 and start test. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah, looks like we're doing some batteries. So, <clears throat> battery state of charge, zero. Battery state of health, zero. Bad, replace. Well, it's a good thing my parents budget because now they're going to be buying two batteries. Well, unfortunately, that comes to the conclusion that both batteries have been way beyond their reasonable years. So, we're going to go ahead and remove both batteries because... When I take them to O'Reilly's, they're gonna want the cores, and so I have to leave the old batteries there. That way I don't get charged for them. Definitely whenever you do replace a battery, remove your old one first and take it in to go get the new one. That way you don't have that core charge. Another super cool thing I wanted to quickly add is that they also have charging system tests and starting system tests. So this one will actually test like your starter health and this one will actually test your alternator health. So. All of these tests are all integrated into the T10 scan tool, just right here under um, the regular uh, diagnostics. And uh, this one's for a bore camera. So the, the T10 has a little extra features with the battery system test and the inspection camera versus the T8. Uh, I really like this T10. It has a bigger display and comes with these all extra features, which I have used quite a bit because I just did battery tests on my tow rig and had to replace both of them. Yeah, ouch, $400 in batteries. But it's very easy to know and just to diagnose really fast 
what is actually the issue. Is it a battery? Is it the charging system or the starting system when it's starting to do weird electrical things? I have both scan tools, the T8 and the T10, and I use them both for different things. I like the T8 to have in my truck as like a travel kind of scan tool, because then that way I can just hook up to say the Bluetooth on my phone, or I'm sorry, the Wi-Fi on my phone if I'm out and about, or in the middle of a desert doing photo shoots in Vegas. Mm-hmm, needed it then too. So that one's really nice and handy. I keep it in the hard case, put it in the back seat of my truck. Very easy to tag along. Uh, the T10 I usually keep in the shop because I have like the bore scope on it. We do battery testing and such. And it has all the same exact features as the T8 does. So either one, I love them both. I use them both. Um, if you're wanting a little bit extra features, I would go for the T10. If you're just wanting a regular scan tool, diagnostic tool, and immense amounts of programs that you can do with them, obviously vehicle dependent. For instance, I was working on my parents' Buick Enclave, and to do the rear brakes, you have to electrically retract the pistons. Whatever, must be a GM thing. But I didn't realize that until I looked at the procedure, saw that on there, and I was very thankful that my T8 scan tool was able to do that so that I wasn't just in the middle of a brake job and couldn't finish. So little stuff like that, it makes life so much easier. You can plug it into your vehicle as you're just driving along and get like on the fly reports of everything going on as well, which is another helpful thing. So having good tools in your toolbox really saves a lot of time and money in the end, especially when you're diagnosing stuff. So. 10 out of 10 for me on these ones, and we're gonna get the batteries replaced and check back. All right, so we got the hold down off. We got the negative on off. This positive cable is positively a pain in the butt. Okay, let's see here. All right, I'm gonna need two hands. All right, pause, I need two hands. All right, so now that we know that both batteries need to be replaced, I'm gonna go ahead and start the process of removing the JL battery. And I'm gonna throw them in my truck and uh, take them in for the core exchange and come back later to install them. That way I can go and run all my errands I have to do in town. So I'm gonna begin that process and hopefully my phone doesn't die so that I can film it. Of course my phone so conveniently dies when I'm pulling up a battery, but there's a battery. Our auxiliary battery is down here. Let me pull out the two 10 millimeter bolts and show y'all. So here's your negative. Oh, golly, okay, well, that's one way to just take it out. There you have it. So, I mean, we're already here. We might as well just take it out. Uh, but you always wanna make sure that you have these all um, wrapped up. But uh, I guess we'll take that one off, put that one on there, and swap all of them that were on this stud to this stud. And unfortunately, they're going to fit a little bit loose because they did this one really small. Oh, I just love Jeep, Chrysler, Dodge Ram, FCA. They suck. They want to make things so hard on you. Like, why? Why do I want to have this on my vehicle? I hate it. Everyone I've known hates it. They always disconnect it or turn it off. So what? what is the... Uh, whatever. I'm done with my TED Talk. Anyways, this is this tiny little auxiliary battery. Um, that is a death trap because it'll leave you stranded when it dies. And it is it's basically a parasite to your main battery. So we're going to go ahead and just take all of this off. We're going to tape up everything so that we don't have any issues with them. Unfortunately, we can't just remove the harness because it's integrated into the main harness, which is just lovely. So we're gonna do our best to just go ahead and tape these off and bypass the whole system. All right, we're gonna take this little pesky parasite out. Interesting, this little guy's got life. I guess we'll see how much life icon let's see what kind of battery is this um 
doesn't really say. So we're at 200 cold cranking amps. Battery test. Okay. No. Oh wait, no, here we go. Start stop battery. It's got its own. Nice. Oh gosh. 200. Okay, can I just put in the number? Thank you. Okay. Start. It's testing. Wow. So it does have a hundred percent state of health. Um, there is zero charge. So this battery is still good. It was taking all the health from this one. It's a parasite. Alrighty, one package secured. Second package secured. We're gonna load these puppies up, take them to O'Reilly's, swap them out. That sucker is heavy. This one doesn't seem to be as heavy as that other one. And it's got a nice handle. Alrighty, and away we go. All right, so this is a couple days later because I've been busy in the shop, but I got everything hooked back up and I wanted to share with y'all what the setup looks like. So underneath where that auxiliary battery is, I taped off both the positive and the negative uh, cables that run to the auxiliary battery, taped them both off separately, and then put the cables back in to where that bottom hole was and put the cover back on. Then I put the battery back in and tightened down the hold down that's down there. Re-put in all of our lights and audio things that are going on up here. Put the positive terminal on, tighten it down, and then this is where the negative terminal stuff comes into play. So the one that has this big old sticker on it, this is actually for your auxiliary. Another kind of key thing that shows a difference is that this one's quite a bit smaller than this one so this is your main negative uh negative chassis terminal so this one we already taped off as you can see and i'm just going to zip tie this up over here and kind of tuck all this away because we no longer need this and because we have a taser uh, mini already installed on this jeep it'll automatically do our function for us of bypassing it so we don't have to really worry about it. So I'm gonna get some zip ties and zip tie that here. And then this main one, I just took this off and put the other negative that's to our audio on it. And then this is another negative going to some lighting. So I just stacked them all together, tightened down this 10 millimeter, and then put the terminal back on and tightened that. Went ahead and started up the Jeep and it ran just fine. So. That's the uh, final install for the jail, and now I'm gonna go do the really easy one, which is the TJ. It's running. I'm gonna replace the terminals on it, but I'm gonna do that at my shop because I have a way more tools over there. But at least it started, and I can finish it up over there. <laughs> 